picking up where we left off from the last episode, we now have our Grapplus. Grapplu? I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, the thing that allows us to pull stuff like this and to uh, use logs to get over the terrain. We end up going into this dungeon initially to find the last revenant, um, and the Grapplu gives us access to do that. Uh, we find the chest straight away, which is a nice new stuff for Valir. So we go ahead and equip down her, increases our damage, uh, both magic damage and physical damage is pretty good. And then from here, we're just kind of adventuring into dungeon, uh, learning how to use the Grapplu and attaching onto enemies like this. This fight is pretty quick, uh, only two enemies, so we go ahead and skip it. One sunball into an attack, a couple of attacks even ends the fight pretty quickly. After that fight, we end up continuing forward, but most of this next section is just using the crab blue uh, and activating a switch also to get further into the area. Um, we do encounter these three enemies as well, but there's a lot of enemies in this area, by the way. We kick this one off with a Venom Flurry. It doesn't actually work out very well. We don't get the additional hits, unfortunately. After taking some damage from the Wizards, they end up being fairly low from the, the Venom Flurry even. Um, so we take out the middle enemy, take out the wizard on the left, and then take out the wizard on the right. Not really a difficult fight, maybe one we could have skipped, but yeah. So from here, we end up finding another switch to move this platform. All this whole section is essentially is switches and platforming and switches and more platforming. We're trying to move this platform all the way across to kind of like the beginning area because we need it to be able to get across. Um, you guys will see what I mean if I haven't explained it very well, but yeah, eventually we get to the section with these four enemies here. We end up using uh, Zale's Dash Strike, I think it's called. Um, I'm not sure if we used this before, but the animation looks super cool. He goes ahead and hits them all and explodes kind of like a trigger on all of them. We then follow this up with a Venom Flurry by Sarai and a uh, pretty good one actually. <laughs> one of the best ones we've had for a while that actually kills all four enemies, which is insane. From here, we continue forward, more switches, more levers, um, but this final switch actually brings the platform to the front, as I mentioned earlier. So then we can actually go back to the beginning room, as you guys see this animation here. And as we get back to the beginning room, we can now use that platform to get further across. We find two more enemies, but yeah, the, this enemy combination is kind of a joke, so <laughs> super easy. We just skip this fight, go ahead and take them out pretty quickly and press forward. So far, this kind of uh, dungeon has been quite long in terms of the whole spooky section. I didn't really expect this from this game, but uh, it's been pretty cool. And there's been a lot of fights and stuff to do in general. But we get to this next section, we have to walk down these flights of stairs, loads of them um, in the end. And we end up attaching onto this enemy, which just is one wizard on his own. So we take him out pretty quickly, no point showing this fight. All this section is really is finding switches to be able to move this platform in a position for us to get to the next switch so we can move the platform again and again. We end up bumping into a couple of enemies here, uh, starting this fight out with a nice Venom Flurry, really getting the hang of this spell. And I think it's really, really uh, strong if you can actually get the additional hits on it, similar to Moonerang, but that takes out the Gargoyle pretty easily. And these two wizards are super low, so we end up using an auto attack from Zael and from Vladir and they go down pretty easily. We also get a really nice level up off that fight, which is pretty cool, make our characters a little bit stronger. Still not entirely sure what I should be specking them up with, but we go over a little bit of magic defense for Zale, extra HP for Gars, nice we can still level him up, which means that he'll still be alive, hopefully. Um, and for the two girls, we take some extra magic attack as we're using their magic abilities a little bit more, I think, in this particular area. Again, uh, more switches, more of the platform moving, and we just kind of rinse and repeat until we get to the, the platform back to the beginning or near the beginning, I guess. <laughs> so we end up heading out of the room now that we've got the platform exactly where we want it. We can then use it to get to the last room um, in this dungeon. And we're trying to get a preemptive strike here on the enemy and it's <laughs> not really working that well. We do get it in the end. And we jump into a fight now. This looks super scary. We're all half HP. There's four enemies as well. We end up starting off with a Lunar Shield to kick it off. Using the Lunar Shield into an attack or two from us uh, then leads into the enemies having three of their turns all together, which is very scary. A lot of damage coming out for sure. 
I think I mentioned this before as well, but these wizards do so much damage and it's AoE, which is kind of scary. At this point, a lot of us are low, but I decided to heal up Valir just to make her uh, super healthy. And if the other two die, then hopefully Valir will long last long enough. We then get a really nice Venom Flurry out, which is pretty good. Takes down two of the enemies and leaves us in a better spot. But this next incoming attack from Wizard takes down Zale and Sarai. Sarai, I guess. Uh, but it leaves Valir in a good spot, like we said, because we managed to then kill off the Wizard. And now it's just a 1v1, waiting until our allies respawn. And we actually get dangerously low with Valir here, down to 13 HP, but they respawn in time, which is awesome. From here, we have enough combo meter for the Mending Light to heal the entire party. And then it's a 3v1, it's pretty straightforward from here, just get a couple of attacks in and will him down very slowly. Awesome stuff, once the fight's done, that releases the last head that we need in order to open up the door. Before we go, we end up finding a chest in the corner here, but I'm not sure how to get to it. We look around for a while, but we don't find anything, so we'll just skip this for now. We end up making our way back to the beginning so that we can enter the big door that we just opened up. And we also head to the campfire just beforehand to heal up, but you guys wouldn't see that. So heading into the big room now, we end up walking into this corridor and bumping into somebody who should hopefully help us out, right? So as you skip through this conversation, we tell her we need a soul stone to help our friend. She's obviously very upset about it. We've wrecked all her monsters, her property and everything. And yeah, she's obviously not very happy. And she says that we should join her team as obviously dead soldiers, which we don't want. So we get into a fight as expected to take the soul stone that we deserved. She starts out by charging a skill, which only takes one turn. So we use Valir even to try and reduce it as much as possible, but it doesn't really work out. And she used a skill called Necromancy to summon one of those big monsters, uh, which is a little bit scary. And so we start working on him with Zale and Sarai. I think my biggest focus is to make sure we cancel skills like this onto her to make sure she can't cast Necromancy anymore. And we don't really find out what she does. But after that, we then open up with a nice Moonerang onto all the enemies. One thing to notice here that it actually hits four different enemies with the Moonerang, which is interesting. The pile of bones, the pile of goo, and then the two obviously alive enemies. We'll follow up this round with a pretty poor Venom Flurry, which does some decent damage. We've managed to do a little bit better there, could have got more damage out. Then this guy gets angry, goes into his kind of empowered form, but he's kind of low right now. We used a couple of auto attacks there with uh, Valir and Zale, and he attacks the right there, but he's kind of low, so we need to get him out of the picture as soon as. And we managed to do that pretty easily here, which is nice. We're in a good spot with two combo meter and everyone having some nice mana too. So at this point, because we're in a good spot, the rest of this fight, to be honest, is just her charging a skill or doing a basic ability, us healing up. It's very easy, believe it or not. She charges a skill, we use the right character with the right element and we cancel it and then she uses a basic attack. We get some damage out and really there's no real threat here. It's just us whittling her down very slowly. So the fight ends up being quite tedious, to be honest, and quite easy, like we mentioned before. Um, she uses that eyeball skill and she just charges. The charges are really easy to cancel, like we mentioned. And she gets to this point now where she's kind of hunched over as if she's in a critical state where she's kind of low HP. So this looks like the fight is potentially advancing here. And following that, in the next turn, she has this four turn skill, which requires a ton of symbols to be procced here. Uh, we kick off with an easy one with Moonerang to get those three Luna symbols dealt with. After that, we're able to follow up, follow up with Zale uh, and proc three more of the symbols, which is awesome. Followed by Sarai to get two more out. And then all we're going to need now is a hit from Valir with those hammer icons. Uh, we're going to make sure we get our timing right, which we do. And that ends the fight really nicely. Apologies for the audio cut here as well. So she ends up saying that she yields for now and she's like, look, you guys beat me, whatever, take the soul stone. And she gives it to us, which is awesome. So we can help um, Garl out now, which is pretty cool. We also require the green flame to get back across, if you guys remember from earlier. And she's a bit unhappy about that. Uh, but she's like, yeah, you can take a bottle off my desk, but just leave, basically. <laughs> 
We take the bottle and leave. She lets us know that next time it won't be a three versus one, um, which we argue against a little bit, but whatever. We take the bottle, we got what we needed. We leave, we go to the campfire, and now it's just kind of like a, a nice walk back, I guess, <laughs> to the, uh, the canoe, the canoe is it? is it? I don't know, the boat that we came on basically. Get into a little fight here, but it's very quickly over. You know, nothing really crazy happens, um, but we're just heading back to the boat so we can get back to Gaal and give him what he needs. On the way though, we do find this little secret cave here. Ends up just being a little puzzle where we have to pull down these two lever looking things um, in on time to be able to get the enchanted scarf. End up equipping this onto Valir as we use her Moonerang quite a lot, so that will amplify the damage quite nicely, I think. So after all that, we end up heading back to the Ferryman so we can go back and give Gull his soul, st soul Stone even. And as we trigger this cutscene, it teleports us straight back to the inn, which is awesome, and we can go ahead and hopefully heal Gull. During this time, uh, Sarai actually leaves using a portal and she just kind of gets out of there without saying anything. But the Soul Stones seem to have worked for Gaal, which is pretty nice. And the two of them end up sitting down and just chatting for a little while, going over, um, you know, kind of their history together, how they've kind of grown to be so close as friends and the prophecies that they had earlier, um, which kind of came true for Zale because he said when Gaal got my control, he felt something really strange, which is interesting. But yeah, that's the basis of the conversation. After a little bit of time, Gaal eventually wakes up finally, which means he's all good. He's all feeling well, which is awesome. And the two run over to go and have a chat with him and update him about how things went. They tell him about the whole story of how he basically got knocked out and Sarai, who he hasn't met yet, um, which is pretty cool. Then the headmaster actually arrives downstairs, and so I guess it's time to join up with him. So we do introductions here. It's nice to see kind of the full team back together, I guess, um, which is awesome. We update him and let him know that we also fought a necromancer, which is Romea, and we won. Easy. But... Um, yeah, from there he's like, look, just make any final preparations and let's get going to use the Eclipse to take down the Dweller. So to be honest, I end up looking around for a bit, but I don't really do anything at all um, that changes the game. So we end up just speaking to the Headmaster and tell him we're ready to get going. So just as we're about to leave, Gar wants to come along of course and support, but the headmaster tells him that he's not a solstice warrior so he shouldn't really come. In the end he agrees he can come as long as he doesn't get in the way and our party set off to hit to deal with the dweller. As we return to the door to start casting our magic, the headmaster kicks it off by uh, casting a spell and eventually just kind of spreads to all of the solstice warriors and we get enlightened with the magic I guess, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> The eclipse then happens, which is perfect, and this is our time to strike. As we get inside, we end up coming with a plan to go ahead and deal with uh, the mansion I guess or a castle I think it's a mansion and the headmaster delegates us to go through the ballroom and make our way to the gardens where we'll deal with the botanical horror sounds fancy as we look around and everyone splits off we um, take a look in this first room and we don't find too much for the meantime but we do find the path on the right side which is what we're supposed to take to start heading to the ballroom as we do so so Rai comes through our portal which is pretty awesome so it looks like we're gonna get a fourth party member and Garland Sarai meet for the first time. A little bit weary of the different enemies that we're going to face here but as we go into this next room we look, do a little bit of looking around and our question kind of gets answered pretty quickly as we run into these two fancy looking books. They both seem to be skill charging so we work on the first book on the left here using the empowered auto from Zale and then followed up with a skill from Valer should do the job. I also took a quick look at the swap mechanic and I can see I can swap out characters pretty easy on the fly by using the swap feature that's in battle. 
We went with a Munarang, followed by an attack from Gaal, which managed to take out one of the book pretty easily. Looking at the attacks that they have, they have this AoE fire ability, which is a little bit scary because combined with other enemies, it can do a ton of damage, but pretty easy fight overall. As we finish off these two enemies, a kind of ghoul appears, um, or a ghost I guess, which rewards us by lighting up this campfire that we can use to rest, which is pretty nice. After healing up, we enter the next room here where we got a new type of enemy, which looks like two couples dancing in a circle, but let's see what they have to offer. They have to wait three times for their attack, so we end up using an auto attack from all three of our party members, which takes out one of them pretty easily. Now one of them counter attacks and it looks like it does big single target damage to one of us, which is fine when we employ the same strategy on the other one. Another ghoul appears, letting us know that we should take a look at the left side of the fireplace where we find a torch that opens a secret path. Uh, we went back to rest by the way, but as we come back to this area, there's a switch that we can use that opens a door beneath us so we can continue further into the mansion. There seems to be another room full of uh, mist here, so I know there's going to be more enemies that we need to clear and just then we find these three books that we need to take out. We open up with a pretty nice boomerang and focus on cancelling the skills, followed by an empowered attack from Zael, which cancels two of the skills, and then Gaul's able to finish out one of the books here. In the next turn, we do end up taking a little bit of damage from the fire ability, but we do manage to take one out with a couple of hits from Gaul and Zael. Um, another fire cast though from the book, and if we let two of them cast in one turn, we would have been in trouble I think, but we have enough combo meter to fully heal the party and then finish off the last book. So a little bit sketch, but not too bad overall. Before speaking to the ghoul in this room, we find the Moon Cradle Fish Pie, which basically heals the party for 55 HP and 5 MP, which is pretty cool. We then pick up some stuff for the table and end up talking to the ghoul, or the ghost I guess, which agrees to help us go through the door to the gardens but first we need to make them a sandwich and they give us the recipe for this a pretty simple puzzle to be honest the ghost opens up the kitchen door to the left where we can go in and start getting this sandwich ready Gal says that he'll get it all cooked up as long as we get the ingredients so you have to kind of walk around to the corners of the room and just remember what the uh, ghost gave you in the recipe essentially Once we click the right numbers, a girl makes a sandwich pretty nicely and then we're able to give it to the ghost uh, to basically continue on. I think the only difference here if you do it wrong is that you don't get this bonus 100 gold. Um, but yeah, we do it right, which is nice. And they open the door to allow us to continue. I did also notice a chest in the previous room and I guess it has a rainbow conch, right? Because it's the same looking chest, but not able to get to it into that room. But there is a note here that says to open the secret passage to the kitchen, just look at the pot in the garden. So that's one thing to know and maybe it's a way to get that chest in the previous room. As we enter this next room, we get into a fight, but two bonus books spawn out of nowhere. And this fight is already looking super scary with the AoE from the books and the high damage from the dancing couples not looking too good by the way the uh, game automatically switched to ryan instead of gal because he was making the cake so it left the ryan here which i didn't change back uh, but let's see how we do here opening up with valir going defensive to start out i open up with zell's dash strike ability which i'm not sure if we've used it we probably have but it does okay damage and it gets rid of some of the skill charges but it doesn't really do that much. We then take 3 attacks from the enemies in turn and it looks like these shields we used at the beginning actually come in handy as all of our characters are still full HP from it. We end up taking a bit of damage at the end of that turn but we follow up with Zael and Valir in this next turn and the book at the moment has 38 HP and fortunately Valir ends up doing exactly 38 damage. If they all attacked uh, before we actually killed them I would be a little bit worried. A little bit of a scary situation and Valir is super low at the moment. We end up using the kick from Soraya to delay the action from one of the enemies, but the book ends up casting here. And this unfortunately takes out Valir, so it's not looking too hot for now. We need to take out more of these enemies as soon as we can. Now I think about swapping into Garb, but I end up going for a Sumble to see if this is the play to maybe take out one of the enemies and the book actually doesn't go down so we're still in a pretty bad spot. So Raya as well going down now, it's looking very sketchy guys. 
Only three of the enemies are left. We use Zale to take out one of the enemies here. So there's only two left, but we probably should have swapped the Gaal because if we get hit with Zale, we're dead. And we managed to block that attack in the end. We're taking only 33 damage. If we didn't block that, I think we were dead and we would have had to go back to the previous checkpoint or whatever. But fortunately, the other two allies come back up. We can use a combo to heal everybody and then we should be good to go from here. Man, that was so sketchy, so close. We end up even taking a lot more damage throughout the fight, but we finish off the last remaining enemies and we can take a breather. We'll leave it for this video, guys. And the next one, we can finish off this mansion and hopefully take out the Dweller.